Laos. Just be careful, Coach, when you sit down, the chair rolls. Thank you. Well, in Cleveland, the course is going to roll, <laughs> rock and roll. Welcome to the NCAA Division I Women's Basketball Press Conference featuring the NC State Wolfpack winners from the Portland Four Regional. We'll hear an opening statement from Coach Wes Moore and then follow with questions from our student athletes. The student athletes will then be dismissed and we'll head to the mix zone for additional interview opportunities and we'll open up the floor for questions for Coach. Additionally, at that time when the student athletes are dismissed, our locker room will be open for media availability. Coach, if you could start by providing us a brief opening statement, and then we'll go to questions for the student athletes. Well, we're just really excited about being here. You know, Cleveland rocks, right? So uh, uh, we're, we feel kind of like the party crashers. You know, I don't know that we got an invitation to this thing, but we're here. And uh, so it's exciting. Really proud of these young ladies and what they've done the last few weeks, especially. Uh, we've gone through a juggernaut of really great teams to get here. And uh, couldn't be prouder. And like I said, we're excited about We know we've got a big challenge ahead of us. But uh, hey, we're excited to have that opportunity. We're going to start to our right. We'll go Jake. Then we're going to move back to Lindsay, come to David, move to Ernie. Hey, uh, NC State became the 11th school to put women's and men's teams in the Final Four in the same season. What has it been like in Raleigh this week? Can you sense the excitement among the fan base? Is this a question for all of our student athletes? Yes. If we could start with uh, Sanaya. Man, Raleigh has been rocking. Raleigh has been lit. Um, <clears throat> it's, it's been fun. Those are like our brothers. You know, there's not, there's not just the men's basketball team. We support them. They support us. Um, our fans have been there for us to return. Uh, they were out there at like 3 a.m. one night when we came back from um, we're Portland. So it was really nice just to have that support. And they did the same thing for the men's when they had got back. So it's been fun. Uh, this is the same thing, you know, Hillsborough been, you know, filled, you know, peop uh, fans just run into the bell tower and lighting the red, it's been crowded, and like Naya said, you know, them waiting for us um, at 3 o'clock in the morning means a lot to us. We'll stay to our right. Go ahead, Lindsay. Uh, Lindsay Schnell, USA Today. I actually wondered if you guys, like, stopped in and picked the guys up on your way home. Um, on your charter. But Sanaya, what I really wanted to ask was, obviously, you're playing your old team. Um, Dawn Staley said the other day that she still talks to you, talks to your family. Can you take us through why you decided to transfer and what NC State brought you and how you think your game has developed? Um, I won't speak too much on why I, uh, I transferred, but um, I'm we're just because just we're trying to focus on the game um, this weekend. but. Um, She's a great person. Like you mentioned, we do still talk to this day. You know, she congratulates me on accomplishments, and I do the same thing. Or if it's her birthday, I wish her a happy birthday. Um, she's just that type of person you want to have in your corner um, just for our future opportunities, even if she can't be your coach or if I can't be her player. Um, we're really excited about this matchup. You know, we saw each other yesterday, hugged it out. It was the first time I've seen her in like two years. So it's, it's going to be a friendly battle. Oh, oh, it's developed a lot. Um, he, he lets me have a pretty free game. I think that's another reason I came here. Um, he just lets us play. You know, he's developed my game. He makes sure that I've, you know, gotten my three-pointer better. Because uh, at South Carolina, I think I was like one or two for God knows how many. So <laughs> it's definitely improved. And he makes sure that I get my elbow up. And it's, it's helped a lot. We're going to come to front row with David, and then we'll go to Ernie. David Kloniger, Charleston Post and Courier. Sanaya, kind of on that same line. Do you talk with any of the Gamecocks players? And uh, just from an X's and O's standpoint, what do you see, uh, you know, with their guard matchups for tomorrow? Um, I talked to them a few briefly yesterday at the um, the rock of, what's it called the rock and roll, rock and roll fest yeah. yeah so I talked to them a little bit but um, just the matchups their guards are good their guards are good all around starters and on the bench um, I think if we can limit just their outside ball they can really hit the three ball I think if we can limit that and then just with the post if we can box them out limit them all to um, just one shot I think a lot of their points come off of offensive rebounds so if we can slow that down a little bit I think we'll be all right. We'll take our next question. Go ahead, Ernie. Ernie, Wolfpack Sports Market, and this this was before Isaiah James. Uh, you've been um, really shooting the ball well um, this whole tournament. Um, how do you see your game uh, in its final four against a team 
that plays great defense. You think you can continue your hot streak going forward? Uh, definitely, you know, but not just relying on that three, you know, um, just allowing it to come to me, you know. Um, but just, yeah, I would just say just not relying on it and just still keep going, attacking downhill and still looking for my other teammates. We're going to go to our right. We're going to go Beth. We're going to go over here and then we'll come back up to the front and get you to. Hi, Beth Maiman, SB Nation. Um, this is for both of you. Your coach kind of alluded to it earlier, but to get here, you beat higher seeds than um, you were, and you were, you know, the underdog with not given a huge chance to win. Do you feel like the team has taken on this underdog mentality, and that has that helped you at all get to this point? If we could start with Isaiah. Oh, definitely. I think the team, you know, we took on that underdog. You know, it's good, like Coach Moore said, it's good to be a party crasher and upset teams, but. Uh, I feel like it gives us more confidence, you know, that people look down at us and we can change something. Yeah, um, we've been the underdogs all season, you know, since the season started. Like she said, it gives us confidence, but I also feel like it gives us so much motivation, you know, um, just motivation to, that we have something to prove. We played all season with a chip on our shoulders, and it's the same thing now. You know, we're the underdogs, and like Coach said, we're the party crashers, and, you know, we're coming to crash the party. We're going to stay to our right. If you could raise your hand so the student athletes can see you. Sabrina Merchant, The Athletic. Uh, for both of you, you guys only scored 51 points in the ACC championship game, and that seems kind of impossible considering how you've shot the ball since then. Uh, what changed offensively, or what, what rhythm have you guys gotten in since then? Can we start with Sanaya? That's a good one. Uh, I think we just know we have to score more in order to win these types of games. Uh, all teams are good at this point. Their games are going to be over 50. You know, So I, as long as we score more than the other team, you know, we win, right? Um, Sasa has been a big part of our offense. You know, she's averaging like 20 these past like five, six games. And that's what we need from her. Um, we're a very, very versatile, unselfish team. So it doesn't matter whose night it is. But if she's the hot hand, we're going to keep feeding her. I think there was a game we went to her like six plays in a row. You know, she just was on a roll. So I think she's a big part of what we have going on offensively right now. I think that was said well. <laughs> We're going to move to our left. You can go ahead. Yeah. Lindsay Gibbs with Power Plays. Uh, when we were in Raleigh, um, we were talking about you facing all the Tennessee teams. And I think it was you, Isaiah, who said, so we'll face South Carolina now because of Sanaya. Where did that confidence come from? And when you said that, like, did you really believe that? Like, did you know that this was, this was in the future? Uh, potentially, we knew it was going to come. You know, we know how much this game feels. I mean, me, Sanaya, so. You know, we're just going to have her back out there, and she's going to have our back out there. So, yeah. So you had the oh, yeah. To make it to this game. Oh, yeah. We definitely had the confidence. You know, just like y'all said, being an underdog, that confidence really rooted us uh, to make it here. And, you know, we wanted to do it for Coach Moore. So, yeah. We're going to stay to our left. If you could raise your hand so that they can get the microphone to you. And then, Mitchell, you'll be next. Hey, Ethan McDowell from the Wolfpacker. Sanaya, you got to NC State the same time as River Baldwin, and y'all have kind of grown over these past couple years. When you see her match up against an elite post player, mm -hmm. like, you know, um, Camila Cardoso or, you know, Cameron Brink, how much confidence do you have in River? I have all the confidence in the world. Uh, River's been a post player her whole life. She knows what to do. Um, I'm not sure if she's ever played against Camilla or somebody with the skill of Camilla, but I'm excited to see the matchup. I'm sure everybody's excited to see the matchup, and I have all the confidence in the world. Yeah. We'll take our next question, Mitchell. Mitchell North of North Carolina Public Radio. Uh, Sanaya, just kind of one more in the vein of, you know, you starting your career at South Carolina. Do you think you would have developed into the same player you are now had you not transferred? Uh, that's a good question. I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure if I'll ever know, you know, because, of course, I'm not there anymore. Um, I learned a lot from Don as I was there. I learned a lot from the point guards that were there, obviously, Henny, Zaya, they were older than me. And just watching them, especially being the point guard that I am now, I will say that I did learn some things from them because they were the leaders of the team when I was there. Um, I'm not sure. I feel like I've just developed my like game here as far as my leadership role as well. So I, I'll never know. But maybe, maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna, you have a follow-up, I assume? Well, I was just going to ask if you could rate uh, Coach's singing ability. We saw the <laughs> clip going around. But just talk about how much fun this, se this team uh, seems to have and how does Coach kind of um, foster that environment and balance kind of when you need to be serious versus, you know, when you can be singing and making Cleveland Rocks jokes. Sanaya, so, can you take that one first? 
Yeah, I'm going to say an 11 out of 10 because I like my playing time right now, you know. <laughs> Can't say anything less. But, um, no, he's just a great guy, you know, on and off the court. He motivates us. He loves us. His favorite song is literally My Girls, and he makes sure he sings it to us, like, at least once every week. So, you know, um, we, we love him. We appreciate it. Like, as I said, we did this for him as well. And we're just having fun right now. I think it makes it easier for us when we're all having fun, you know, especially when he's having fun. Uh, when Coach Moore just comes in waddling, it's just like, okay, see, we're, we're going to have a good day, we're going to have a bad day. But he starts dancing, it's like, oh, it's going to be a great day. It's going to be a great day of fun. So we love him. We love him. So yeah. I'll try to do that more often. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Zaya, do you have any any more to add to that? Um, you know, just I think Coach Moore just trusts us, you know. He allows us to, you know, sing our songs, but then he knows – like we know when to lock in like we know when to settle down and start to focus and maintain our focus on the game and stuff like that we're going to move back to our right Lindsay well now we're going to have fun with this uh Lindsay <laughs> Chanel USA today what song would you like to hear him sing has he ever done any Beyonce or Taylor Swift Isaiah we'll start with you <laughs> it's definitely my girl I'm what? Yeah, my it's just my girl. My girls. My girl. Yeah, that's his top song. Yes, this is top song. Yes. Um, he claims his favorite is Beyonce. So what song? Yeah, what song? she wrote a song about me, so that made yeah. it kind of special. Uh, uh, you may have heard of it. Drunk in Love. Drunk in Love. <laughs> <laughs> We're both from Texas, so <laughs> kind of connected there. Yeah. Any additional questions for our student athletes? We'll take one right here, and then we'll come back to you, Ernie. Thanks. Aaron Barzlai from Her Hoop Stats. You were talking a little bit about locking in. How are you balancing kind of experiencing Cleveland in the Final Four and this whole journey with kind of making sure that you're really going to be focused and fully prepared for Friday night? Is this for both students? For both athletes? players, yes. All right, we'll start with Sanaya. I'm not going to lie, it's a lot, like, this is a lot of, like, media and it's a lot of experience. So, I, like, I just woke up from a nap in the locker room because, you know, I had a little bit of time just to lay my head down. But it's been fun, you know, but how do we balance it? I think, well, as I said, you know, just making sure that we're locked in. Um, I don't know, it's, it's a lot, but I think we're really enjoying the ride. You know, we just picked out our gifts, you know, that part was fun. And then you balance it out with some basketball, you know, the practices. Then we get to talk to you guys and it's a good conversation. So, I think we're doing a pretty solid job balancing it. Yeah, just yeah, just like Nadi said, balancing it, and then like going back to the hotel, and then making sure we're you know focus on film and getting to bed early, and you know eat, make sure we eat in and stuff like that. So we'll take our next question from Ernie, and then we'll go to Zoom for an, an additional question. Ernie Wolfpack Sports uh, Radio, uh, Sanaya Rivers, uh, you got a championship with the team you're going to play with. What would it mean for you to get a another? Ring on the other finger. I actually this every yeah. trip for you, so we got to keep it going. Hey, I'm gonna keep it consistent. You know, I would love to have two, you know, rings on my hand. Uh, it would be really nice. Uh, my mom keeps it in the case right now, so you know she's gonna want me to give her the other one. But I might have to bring both of them out if that happens, when it happens. So, for sure. Yeah. At this time, we'll take a question from Zoom. Craig, your line is open, and you should be able to ask your question. Please proceed. Craig Loper, Wavy TV 10, Norfolk, Virginia. This is for Isaiah. Um, hey, Isaiah, you played at a powerhouse in Princess Anne, won a state championship, a lot of games. Two-part question, how did your time at Princess Anne prepare you for your time in college? And the second part of that is, how does it feel to be representing the 757 during this great run y'all are on? Definitely coming um, in high school, just coming from, a, you know, another winning program, you know, helped me up here, you know, just staying humble as well. Coach, um, Coach Doja, I'm sorry, is the same same coach as me as Coach uh, Moore. You know, they stay on me uh, all the time, and I, lo I love that type of thing. I love that type of energy. It keeps me going. It keeps me focused. But, you know, just to bring it back to the 7-5, it, it, it feels good, you know, just to have my brother looking over me as well. You know, it feels good to bring it home for them. Sanaya, Isaiah, we want to thank you for your time today. Thank At this you. time, you will move over to our mix zone, and the locker room is available, and we will open up questions for Coach. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Hey, man. All right, we will start. Yeah, tracked you down, man. That's we'll go Lindsay, good. Jake, Andrea, then we'll work back to, to Ernie. Lindsay Chanel, USA Today. I'm going to resist the urge to ask for your review about Beyonce's country album. Yeah. But um, can you talk to us about Sanaya, about how you've seen her grow when yeah. she went into the portal? What did you like about her game and 
What did you think she could eventually become? Well, obviously, she's from Wilmington, North Carolina, so I had an opportunity to see her play many times. So I knew uh, how special she was, is. Um, but yeah, I, I have seen her grow a lot. I think really her and Isaiah both, if you want to go there, have just matured so much. I think a year ago, Sanaya came in, and we had a lot of veteran players, and she was probably hesitant to try to take on a leadership role and and maybe even try to talk to her teammates much uh, on the court. But uh, now I think she realizes she's a leader for us and we're counting on her and uh, just to see her. It, it's it's really what coaching is about, okay? You you see them come in as, as girls, high school girls, and then all of a sudden at some point you see them become confident women and uh, so it's neat to see that process happen and uh, obviously uh, it's made a big difference in our program the way her and, and Isaiah both have really grown up and matured uh, this past year. We'll stay in the front, Jake. Coach, there's a, a lot of attention on this Final Four. It seems like your team is loose and really enjoying the yeah. moment. How would you characterize their mentality going into with this game? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I hope it's just what we've been doing. I mean, we've uh, that's what I told them. That's what I've been telling them every step of the way. You know, I, we're having so much fun, I don't want to see it end. So, uh, you know, that's what our message has been. I mean, we go to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame last night, and they had a section set up where they had a guitar player and maybe a drum player or whatever, and they would play whatever song you wanted, and they had mics for all of them, and uh, they jumped all over it. So. Uh, you know, and uh, I, I enjoyed getting in there with a, with a couple of songs. But when we left, a couple of them were, I mean, hate to say it about a young lady, but perspiring heavily, okay? <laughs> and I told some of them, I hadn't seen you do that in a practice. So they were using a lot of energy out there uh, performing those songs. But we just, we're having fun. And uh, so I hope that doesn't change, you know? Uh, you know, they've all been big games, you know, uh, every step of the way. And uh, especially, you know, the, uh, the two in Portland uh, go all the way across the country and, and play two fine programs like Stanford and Texas, and you fall behind to Stanford 10 at halftime. Uh, it had been real easy to, you know, maybe have some doubts. But hadn't seen it yet, and sure as heck don't want to see it tomorrow. We're going to go to Andrea, back to Ernie. Then we'll work our way up this side of the room. And I see you on this. I see you. Go ahead. Andrea Adelson with the ESPN right here. Uh, oh, sorry. That's yeah, all right. Uh, Wes, obviously, you've done a terrific job building up this program. You've had teams that maybe were more favored than this one to make it to this point. Have you had a chance to reflect on or make sense why this team right now in this moment? Yeah, you know, uh, when we won well, uh, that, that Texas game to secure our berth here, you know, the the first thing I'm thinking of is Kay Yao, 34 years, head coach, uh, took this program to the Final Four in 98. And then I thought about our team two years ago where we had a really, we had a, it was a little bit different. We had a team that really most of those players had been with us five years. They had maybe come in, worked their way up. Uh, they weren't, uh, you know, top, most of them weren't even top 100 players but they just worked hard and they loved each other and we just kept getting better and better individually team and to fall that close you know double overtime to go to the final four i thought of them and then this this group you know unranked uh in the preseason picked eighth in the acc uh but then when you when you beat uconn i mean it's a measuring stick i mean you can't help but look at that uh then you Go to the Virgin Islands, win three games. You beat a great Colorado team. Then you jump into ACC play and have some success. And I think all that prepared us for this. And uh, we've had our best practices probably the last few weeks because, again, let's face it, it's kind of the end now. So you know, oh, gosh, we're not practicing another month. It's, you know, it's right now. And, uh, but I think the chemistry, the closeness is what has made this team special. And, uh, Made it an unbelievable ride for me. I'm just so blessed and thankful. Coach, we're going to go to our right, Ernie. Wolf Sports Radio, Coach. 
it's been a 35 year journey to get here. How does it really feel? Yeah. And also, you've had success against all the, your program has had success. All, all these teams that are in the final four, you've beaten Iowa last year, you, Connecticut this year, and South Carolina, you're the last team to beat them at home. Um, Still? Still? Yeah. Yeah, after three, yeah, you were the last team to beat wow. them. At South, yeah, they haven't lost at home since mm -hmm. you won. Yeah. So how do you, moving forward, a lot of the tension is about the other teams. How do you feel about your chances here uh, in the Final Four? Yeah, I mean, I can read the ticker, you know. Uh, they're not worrying about hurting my feelings, I guess. Uh, you know, Stanford and Texas, I think our chances of winning were 20-something and 20-something percent. And now we're maybe in the teens, <laughs> uh, if that, uh, the percentage odds to win it. I also saw the odds of us winning a national championship are below 1%. But hey, I'm that dumb and dumber guy. So you're saying there's a chance. All right. So, uh, you know, um, one game, you know, at a time, one game, uh, we're going to have to play really well. We're going to have to have some things go our way. I don't have any doubt. The Lord's been looking out over me these last couple of weeks. Uh, we've shot the ball well, and, uh, you know, we got to do that. If you don't shoot the ball well this time of year, you're probably going home. So we got to shoot it well. Obviously, we got to find a way to somehow, we're not going to stop her, but slow Cardoza down a little bit and, uh, and then hopefully do a great job on the boards. But yes, uh, I'm excited. You know, you can look at it one of two ways. Oh my gosh, you're playing. I think it's the best team South Carolina's had, no doubt in my mind. Okay, because they can shoot it, all right? Uh, when we beat them a couple of years ago, whatever, uh, they had, had Aaliyah Boston, great player, uh, but we were able to maybe help a little bit here and there off other people. It's, it's a little bit tougher now. They got three or four kids that are shooting over 40% from three. It's going to be a tough challenge. But, uh, you know, I've gotten all the text messages about David and Goliath, okay? So praise the Lord. Amen. Coach, we're going to stay to our left, the second to the back row. If you could raise your hand so Coach can see you. Um, Grace Rainer with The Athletic. Uh, you mentioned KL. Just what did she mean to you, and what do you think she would make of this run y'all are on? Yeah. Not going to do it. Okay. Um, you know, um, it's just hard to describe what she means in the state of North Carolina. Uh, you know, and it was more than basketball. And even now, in her passing, look at what she's doing. You know, I mean, the KEI Foundation is doing so much for cancer research and treatment and helping people. Uh, I'm proud of that. KEI and Jim Valvano are both NC State, and they're both making an impact uh, in this world, uh, even after their passing. So. Uh, you know, it was uh, unbelievable. I wish I had time to tell the story of how I ended up at, at NC State with her. I mean, that whole thing's a miracle. I was a D3 coach in Tennessee, and, you know, how I got that job's crazy. But, um, you know, she was just such an unbelievable person. And uh, that, it, it, that, of course, sometimes is hard to take because I know I'm not near the person she, she was. We're going to stay to our anyway, left. very special in North Carolina. Um, she's a legend, and uh, it's awesome to be here uh, and, and following her. It's her her program. We'll take our next question to the left. Coach Lori Riley from the Hartford Current. Um, you guys scored, I believe, the most points against UConn this year in that November game. Don't know if you've had a chance to see them during this tournament run that they've had, but I'm just curious about what you think the differences are and the changes are in that team from the team that you guys saw yeah. when they had all their players, yeah. everybody at the beginning yeah. of the year. Yeah, when we played them, they had fun. <laughs> and uh, we, I'll be honest with you, we played unbelievable that night. You know, we were at home, sold out crowd like always. Uh, it was just, I mean, Sanaya Rivers scored 30-something, I believe. She's hitting shots from everywhere. Uh, but the whole team just played unbelievably well. 
And uh, that's what you have to do to beat a great team like that. I think this is Geno's best coaching job, to think about who all he lost along the way and now he's still in the Final Four. I mean, come on. So, uh, yeah, uh, I have an opportunity to watch him. Obviously, Paige Beckers is really stepping up big. And uh, to think her and Caitlin Clark here together, uh, this is a great time for women's basketball, y'all. Uh, just the entertainment value. Uh, is making it really special, and I think you see the TV ratings going through the roofs. And you know, I I love watching it uh, when I'm at home. I've got a computer watching film in front of me, and I got that TV on watching everybody else. And uh, it's a, it's a great time for our sport. We're going to go to our right. We'll come back to Tom. We'll come back up to the front. Hey, Coach Brian Pertle with Tw Pack Pride Twenty Four Seven Sports. Uh, you've mentioned the sort of David and Goliath analogy. What do you feel is the, the stone in the sling for this team? What's kind of the X factor that will give you all a shot? Yeah, good question. You know, I, I, just, I think first of all we got to take away the easy points for them. They're so good, you don't need to help them any. So transition D, you got to find a way to get back, and, and they can run uh, and and make them. You know, take away layups. Same thing, offensive boards, you got to find them. And they're a great offensive rebounding team. To be honest, we didn't do a very good job against Texas in that area. Uh, so we're going to have to find a way to keep them off the glass and, and giving them easy buckets that way. And then we need to shoot the ball well. We need to hit some threes, loosen that defense up a little, and, and widen that defense out. You know, the, the better you shoot the three, the bigger those gaps get in the defense. So we need to do that. We need to take care of the ball. And we've been doing probably our best job of the season in our last few games of taking care of the ball. But those possessions, we got to have those shots uh, to have a chance. So um, maybe that in a nutshell is what we're looking at. Tom. Hey, Coach. Tom Withers, AP. Did you grab an instrument at the Rock Hall, or did you just stick with the vocals? Uh, uh, what's that again? Did you grab an instrument at the Rock Hall, or did you no, just stick with really. the vocals? You know, uh, you know, when you got a voice like this, you really want to stick with your strength, you know? <laughs> Uh, no, I cannot carry a tune in the bucket, but I love music. Uh, just in the last couple of months, thanks to Stephanie helping me a little bit, I've seen Journey in Raleigh, I've seen the Eagles in Raleigh, I've seen the Doobie Brothers. Uh, so yeah, I love it, and uh, it was a it was a great great deal. I was so excited about going to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So. You mentioned the great state that the game is in right now, and there's such parity out there. That being said, how impressive is it that, that the Gamecocks are 38-0? Yeah. <laughs> Why would you have to say it out loud? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you know, again, that's what I'm saying. This is the best team she's had. We all know she's an unbelievable coach, uh, and she's had great players. And I, and I shared with them yesterday, I'll tell you all now, uh, when she was hired, I was coaching at UT Chattanooga, and I actually interviewed for the job as well, okay? And we met at the Biltmore. I don't know if you all are familiar with the Biltmore in Asheville, North Carolina. That's where we did the interview. And I, I'm, I'm asking them like, okay, how do I get in the gate? Uh, just tell them you're here to see South Carolina. Okay. Uh, but can you believe they made that decision and went that direction? <laughs> but, you know, it's worked out pretty good, I guess. But, uh, yeah, they're loaded. She's great. Uh, you know. Like I said, but you know, you can look at it two ways. Oh my gosh, why do we have to play them first game here? Uh, I look at it as, man, there are 356 teams that would give anything to have this opportunity. So let's load up that stone and let it rip. We're going to go to our, our right. If you could raise your hand so that coach can see you. I'm a bachelor, Sports Illustrated. Uh, I'm curious how you've seen Zoe develop over the course yeah. of the season and just navigate the intensity of this month as a freshman. Yeah, you know, we knew Zoe was going to be a, a great player for us. Um, and she's still a freshman. And y'all, I, I don't know, again, uh, to think about these kids were playing in a high school gym a year ago, and now they're here in this venue, and they're playing people that are fixing to be playing in the WNBA here in a, in a month. Okay, I mean, they're playing against 24-year-old women. Uh, so it's amazing to me that they can even handle that. But Zoe's, you know, again, a special player. Um, she's, the, she's kind of been a little X factor for us because when we, when we bring her in, that adds another person that can get downhill and create and, 
make things happen. So, uh, yeah, it's pretty pretty fun to watch how she's how she's grown as well. We're going to take our final two questions. We're going to go to the front row, and then we'll go to you in the red. Red. You got to go with red. <laughs> Lindsay Gibbs with Power Plays. Coach, obviously the men's program is in the Final Four as well, but they will have a much more tangible thing uh, with because the men's side has units. So they will, uh, both the college and uh, the conference will get a lot of money. Do you think that's where the women's game needs to go now with the increased viewership and, um, and the new TV deal? Yeah, I would love to see it happen. I mean, uh, you know, I, uh, you know, I know on the men's side, it's the revenue that's brought in and all that uh, makes it, you know, tangible that they can divide that money up. I would think we're doing pretty good in ours now. And so uh, I think it'd be great if our universities could benefit from, you know, appearances and how deep you go in the tournament. I'd love to see it, but, uh, you know, again, that's way above my pay scale. We'll take our final question. Hi, Coach. Talia Goodman with The Next. Just wondering if you've had a chance to talk to Coach Keats about what your two respective runs will do for, for this school. Yeah, we, we haven't talked a ton about that. Uh, probably not for last. We were on the phone about midnight, and uh, we, you know, he's, uh, it's awesome. What he's done is a miracle he turned that thing around and now they're on such a roll uh you know i could see them i could see them being out there in arizona for a while but uh we've we've kind of chalked it's funny because uh i haven't i have an nil deal at a little place called sammy's little sports bar and uh i was in there the other day at lunch before we flew out and he said hey you need to stick around i've got like the new york times or somebody coming in here to interview me because we've had people wrapped around the building trying to get in when you are the playing or the men are playing. I said, okay. He said, I, I guess I ought to, since you're bringing us so, business, so much business, I guess I ought to let you eat free. Oh, you're already doing that. I said, yes, but let's make it a lifetime agreement now. <laughs> so I got a handshake on that. I got that going for me. But uh, no, uh, you know, everything's booming in Raleigh. It's, it's just everybody's so excited. And you know, at first you're thinking, oh wow, Connecticut did it too. You know what's neat? This is the first time ever that two schools have had both teams in the Final Four. So we'll share that with them. But yeah, it's pretty awesome to see what he's done. Awesome, we wanna thank you for your time today. Thank Best you. of luck tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you all, thanks very much. As a reminder,